One of the questions that we get all the time is, how does hyperbaric oxygen bypass red blood cell carrying capacity? We know that hyperbaric oxygen increases the amount of oxygen that our body is able to absorb, carry, and then deliver into the cell. And it's actually one of the things that makes hyperbaric oxygen so unique. That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. So I use the phrase bypass red blood cell carrying capacity pretty often, and I do that to really just simplify the concept. But physiologically speaking, that's not exactly what is going on. So we have to take a few steps back so that I can describe the entire process so that we can really understand what makes hyperbaric oxygen so unique. So there are a number of different ways that different molecules are being moved through our bodies. Simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport, these are different mechanisms of taking a molecule from, let's say, one side of a cell and moving it either into the cell or from inside the cell back out of the cell. Oxygen is a passive diffuser. What does that mean? It means it doesn't take any energy for it to move throughout our system. What it does require is a concentration gradient. Concentration gradients are basically a way of moving molecules from high concentration to low concentration. So even right now at sea level, the pressure of oxygen in the air that I'm breathing needs to be higher than the pressure of oxygen inside my lungs. The pressure of oxygen inside my lungs needs to be higher than the pressure of oxygen in my circulation. The pressure of oxygen in my circulation needs to be higher than that of the red blood cell. And as long as there's a concentration gradient going in that direction, we can extract oxygen from the air and we can saturate our red blood cells. That pressure of oxygen inside our circulation needs to be maintained until those red blood cells get to a location where they're gonna deliver the oxygen to a working cell. So on the delivery side, the pressure of oxygen inside the red blood cell needs to be higher than the recipient cell. And so that allows oxygen to move off of the red blood cell, back into circulation, and then from circulation into that working cell. And then the pressure of oxygen in that working cell needs to be higher than the mitochondria because that's the destination for this oxygen to go inside the mitochondria for ATP production. So as long as that concentration gradient exists, it's the highest in our atmospheric air, it's the lowest inside of our mitochondria, and there's a step-down process of gradients along the way, we could move oxygen from our environment into our body and utilize that oxygen to oxidize our fuel and produce cellular energy. So how then is it different in a pressurized environment inside the hyperbaric chamber? Whether you're pressurizing air, 21% oxygen, or you're pressurizing 95 to 100% oxygen, either way, what are you actually doing is you're creating a temporary increased pressure of oxygen in the environment that this person is breathing in. What is that doing? It's increasing exponentially the pressure of oxygen that is ultimately going to reach the lung you're now getting a higher pressure of oxygen in the lung and then therefore a much higher concentration of oxygen into circulation. We'll get right back to the video, but real quick, I wanted to let you know that if you're new to hyperbaric and you're really trying to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen and its appropriate uses, I wrote a book, Oxygen Under Pressure, which is available on Amazon, and it goes into the details of what is hyperbaric, how does it work, why does it work, why is it so powerful for so many of the things that it helps, and how do we use it appropriately and use it safely. And so if you're interested in that, we're gonna add a link in the description below so that you can buy that book today. All right, now back to the video. Now under normal physiological conditions, especially at sea level, red blood cells just based on 21% oxygen at normal atmospheric pressure are already basically 100% saturated. In other words, all this extra oxygen that's being driven into the body through the pressurized environment, it cannot increase red blood cell saturation any more than 100%. So as this excess oxygen is going into circulation, red blood cells are going by through the capillaries of the lung, the red blood cells will be saturated 100%, but the rest of the oxygen has no other place to go. And so the plasma, which typically carries very little oxygen, becomes a reservoir of the excess oxygen being driven into circulation from that pressurized environment. And now that's free floating oxygen that's able to move through your circulation. And once that super saturated plasma reaches working tissues, that oxygen is then delivered into those working cells, into those mitochondria for increased levels of ATP production. So it's not exactly that it's bypassing red blood cell carrying capacity. It's just that under normal circumstances, red blood cells are already saturated. One slight difference would be somebody living at elevation. Let's say they're living in Colorado or, or even at higher elevations. In those cases, their environment is actually less pressure than sea level. And as a result, their body has produced more red blood cells because they're not saturating 
at 100%. So as the body lives at altitude and the body starts to sense a relative hypoxia, the adaptation that we have to that is to increase our red blood cell count. So now when somebody at altitude is using hyperbaric, the first thing that's going to happen is their red blood cells will become saturated first. Once they're 100% saturated, whatever additional oxygen is going into circulation will then be free-floating oxygen the way most people at sea level would have already been. So another question that comes out of that is, is there a difference in the effect of hyperbaric at altitude versus sea level? And the answer to what we could tell so far is no. The increased quantity of oxygen at altitude versus sea level should be just about the same. The differences in sea level, almost all of that will be free-floating plasma-based oxygen. And at altitude, the initial amount will be red blood cell saturation, and any additional amount would be plasma. But the total quantity should be about the same. Therefore, the total effect appears to be the same as well. I hope that helps answer this question, and I look forward to seeing you next week. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that, and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.